let's see, I did show you guys the light before, right? I think I showed you earlier. This is the Aspect Light from Soltech Solutions. It's a luxury pendant grow light, which I'm really excited to get set up. So um, I've been waiting to get this up all week and there it is up there. We're just playing with it and figuring out exactly where we wanted it. So I just marked the ceiling and we're gonna install it right now. So that's the anchor. Mm -hmm. And you just put one of those in, that's what you just You screw in right up in through there. This is the first part, I think they call it the swage block. Okay. Yeah. All right, so that part's in. So now you just hang that like that, and there it is. So then you just want to decide how low you want it. You want it more of a spotlight down lower, closer to the plants. You can do that. This one, I've inserted the anchor in the wall already, and the screws in like that. Okay, and then it has this cap, and you just screw that on there. Okay, so our Soltech light is up, the pendant light, and what we're gonna do is move in a shelf. Now, I did have a shelf here before, and I don't know if you guys saw it in the last clip or not. These, I'm shooting this on different days. Um, so I was waiting to find the right shelf to be able to go with that light, and I think we found it. So Michael and I were at an estate sale, and we found this, well, actually it was an estate sale shop, here in Tucson, and we found this arched shelf. It has glass shelves too, so I think it'll be perfect for some plants. Um, so the light can kind of shine through, and I think it's gonna light it up really nicely. So I've got Michael here, he's gonna help me move this. You have it first. Spinning. That looks centered. Come back this to your, yeah, to your level. Right there. Yeah, I think that's good. Oh yeah, see that's wiping it right away. Perfect. You want me to get one too or? No, let me. Do you want me to do it? I'll give you this one. Yeah. Okay. I'm just gonna finish wiping this down. I've got a couple smudges right down here. Let's see if those will come off. Oh yeah, it's starting to come off here. There we go. It's wiping here too. I'm gonna go grab my spray, just some vinegar and water, clean the glass shelves, and then we'll get figuring out what plants we're gonna put up here. Okay, let's hook the light up to the timer now. So Soltech Solution lights come with one of these timers, and that's what it looks like. So you have the black side here, that's the PM, and then you have the white side, that's the AM, and you just turn this knob, wait, it goes that way, and you just turn it and set the time that it is when you're setting this up. So right now it is 4.20. Wait, I gotta make sure it's on the PM side. Okay, so there we go, it's in the black. This little outside part, you can lift those up or press them down. When you want the light on during those hours that you want it on, you press them down. And then when you don't want it on, you wanna make sure the light is turned off, then those are left up. So hopefully that makes sense. And then up here it says outlet on or timer on. So I'm turning it on timer. And then right on the side there is where you plug in your light, and then you plug in the timer to the wall. So that's one of the lights, and I've got the other light, but I think I'll show you guys that tomorrow. Because we gotta go get food. We gotta go get food, yeah, we do have to go grocery shopping. <laughs> but at least we got the, the shelf in there. Oh, I didn't say how much it was. It was $66. Um, so I think that's an excellent deal for furniture. Furniture is kind of expensive these days, you know? We're gonna work on that project tomorrow though, so I will cut right here and I will be back tomorrow and we're gonna work on getting this set up. Hey guys, good morning. We're in the plant room, it's the next day and I'm, I wanted to invite you guys in here while I was picking out the plants we're gonna be styling with today. So I have a couple plants in mind and one is gonna be a string of hearts here and then also a Dayun Edu, Eduli. Hey guys, it's me from the future. I'm editing this video right now and I just wanted to mention that I actually went to a local nursery here in Tucson and I was talking to one of the owners and as it turns out, he's been growing these for over 30 years. He grows them from seed. So I was talking to him about their natural habitat, their soil, their care, their water requirements, uh, light and everything about them, including the pronunciation and he pronounces it Diawan Eduli. So I just wanted to put that out there.
This one is, is a new one to me. I just got this recently at Box Cactus Nursery and I saw that sitting up there. Actually, both Michael and I spotted it at the same time and we were like, whoa, what, what is that? That's interesting. <laughs> it is a cycad and they're super like architectural. Like they're, they're just beautiful, but they're dainty and delicate at the same time and they're slow growing. So I thought, hmm, that might be able to stay on a shelf for quite a while and be able to enjoy itself. And also they are, well, both of these can deal with drier environments so they don't have to have high humidity. So cycads, if you guys don't know, are one of the oldest living plants that produce seeds and they were around from the time of the dinosaurs. They're really, really cool. So they're known as living fossils. So while they're not a new genus by any means, they are new to me because I have not cared for one before. So this is my first one and I haven't I got to see like what their root system is like either. So I wanted to unpot this on camera with you guys so we can kind of check it out together and also I plan to um, incorporate this footage of unpotting this into a future care video. Okay, we're gonna see what's happening with the root system of this Dayun Eduli and let's go ahead and take off the top dressing here. Let's try to corral that into my little bowl here because I like to save it and reuse it. That's like really chunky. I don't know if you guys can see it, but that's super chunky pumice in there. Yeah, that plant is pretty thirsty. It's got some pretty dry roots. We just got this from the nursery and the soil is absolutely bone dry on it. So it looks like they have this in about a 50-50 mix of just pumice and regular potting soil. So I got this old clay pot from an estate sale. I love this. I've been saving this for the perfect plant to go in here. And because it is so like rustic, it almost reminds me of a fossil in itself or some sort of ancient piece of pottery. And so I think putting a living fossil plant in this pot will be a perfect match. And I'm pretty sure the roots yeah, that'll, yep, that's gonna be perfect. Okay, now these do have quite a tuberous root because they are drought tolerant. Now they're tolerant of drought, but to really thrive, they do prefer regular watering. Yeah, I think this pot will work out perfect for it. So I'm just gonna make sure that that root tuber is just below the soil and completely covered, but I'm not covering the crown at all um, how they originally had it. So it might look a little off for a while, but I think they will self-correct over time. I just wanted to plant the, the tuber, the root tuber, and the crown perfectly straight uh, because I noticed that they had had it planted like kind of diagonally in the soil, sort of like crooked. So I just wanted to straighten that out. And I, I think eventually uh, the top part, you know, the fronds will be able to kind of correct themselves. Uh, and I'll have the grow light coming in directly from overhead straight down on it. So hopefully that will help. Now I'm gonna take this to the kitchen sink, give it a good drink of water, and then we will start styling the plant corner. So we're gonna do the shelves and that whole kind of surrounding area. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this lamp. I have it right over here. And we'll go ahead and get this set up first and just get our lighting all done and then start getting it styled. Okay, I've got my light bulb. This is a Vita LED grow light from Soltec Solutions. So I'm gonna be using this in this lamp. I cannot remember the name of this lamp, but it's from Ikea and it's one of those uh, architect lights and it has that kind of cord that's black and white and it's fabric and it's, it's actually a cute little lamp. I really like it a lot. Some of the grow bulbs have a little bit of weight to them, but I think this one might be able to handle it. We'll see if this can hold it up, and if it can't, I'll figure something else out. Okay, I think I think we're good. I actually love this light. It has a really heavy base too, so it's really it's really very sturdy. I'm gonna have this kind of by the sofa over here. Okay, I'm bringing in my Euphorbia ingans. This is one of my favorite African plants, and I actually was thinking of doing like an all African themed corner here, but then I was like, well, wait, I do have a, a big monstera that has to go over here too. Um, and also my, uh, my Dayun is from Mexico. So we're just, we're gonna make it like international, an international corner. I think we'll put this right by the window here. All right, guys, let me back up here. I've got this monstera. It's, it's lighter than it looks. Uh, it is in a basket and I have it on this little rattan stand. So I'm just going to carefully back it up into its space here. I think I'm gonna put it right on this side here. I think that'll fill in this space here nicely. It might block the closet a little bit, but that's okay. We hardly ever get in and out of here. And then 
Yes, that will be its little light. And I wanna use pieces that have kind of an organic texture or organic shapes to them, like very free flowing, free form kind of shapes. So I'm gonna start with this vase. I've used this in different parts of the house. I've had it on different shelves and I always love it no matter where I put it. I originally got this at Home Goods a couple of years ago and I love this thing. It's made in Portugal, it's a beautiful matte white and it has this textured kind of stone element to it. So I'm going to have this facing this way so it kind of the top of it kind of matches and flows with the arch. So I'm going to be having this on this side here on the right side. I love the play of the light too on pieces like that. Now for you guys I'm not sure how the light's going to come off looking. It's probably going to be a little bit overexposed but in person it's a very soft light hitting this. I am going to incorporate a metal tone in here also and I love the look of brass with the plants and the white. It just pops really nicely and the terracotta. Of course you know use your favorite metal element. The, the brass just happens to be mine when it comes to this kind of uh, color palette that we're going to be using. And this bowl I liked because again it has that kind of natural organic shape to it. It's very free for Formed. So I'm going to use that I think on the second shelf here and we're going to offset it with this one because I feel like these kind of they kind of relate to each other a little bit with that that free form shape. I'm going to add a couple books onto the shelf too. So I've got my Sahara prehistoric artifacts book and then also one of my Australia books. I'm going to put these on the third shelf down here and these are also going to help tie into our color palette. I'm going to add a couple more brass elements to tie into this bowl and one of them is going to be a camel. I love camels and I got this one on eBay a long time ago so I'm going to add this one right on top of my books I think. I'm going to add some crystals on the shelf too. So I have this brass plate that I got at an estate sale. It was like a dollar or something like that. It was like a dollar or fifty cents. It was really inexpensive. I have some ammonite fossils on here. Also some quartz, uh, clear crystal quartz, and then oh, a meteorite from the Sahara Desert. I love meteorites also and collecting them. Okay, I'm gonna put my crystals on the third shelf. Whenever I have glass shelves or surfaces I want to protect, I always use these felt bumpers on the bottom of my pots or saucers. So that's what I did on the bottom of this. So sometimes I'll see these at Home Goods and I'll buy a pack of them, and they have a really big pack of all different sizes. And sometimes they come with a pack of clear ones in there too. And I use the clear bumpers on the bottom of this uh, this bowl here so that way it doesn't scrape up the glass. I have to pot up my string of hearts and I won't do that in this video. I'll, I'll just do that on my own so you guys don't have to sit through that part. But for now since we're filming this I'm just going to set this up here and I am going to be repotting it into this pot though. So I'll just slide this in there for now. I think that plant is going to love it up there though with the overhead light shining all the way down to the floor so it gets all the strands from head to toe. I think I might have found one of my new plant obsessions, these dayunes or cycads. Those little fronds kind of remind me of a feather. They're really, really interesting living fossil. So the dayun, I think I'm going to put right here. Let me put it in its pot or saucer first. All right. Okay, we're back in the plant room. I was looking for a smaller plant that would be able to handle really low humidity. Like normally our humidity is 20, 25% out there. And so it's really hard to raise it too because it's such an open room and I can't ever really trap the humidity into the space. So I was looking for a plant that would be kind of small to be able to put on the top shelf so it wouldn't block the light from getting to the lower shelves. And then I remembered that I had this little baby that needed to be potted up. This is a Finisteria. So I just finished potting it up and it is so cute. These are also known as baby toes. These are one of my favorite succulents. Look how alien that is. Oh my gosh, they're just so, they're so weird, aren't they? I love them. I love weird plants. I just can't get over those things. They are adorable. And I just finished uh, putting the felt pads on its little saucer. Okay, let's take this out to the living room and see how it looks on the shelf. How plump and juicy are those little things? <laughs> They're so adorable. Okay, you're gonna go on the top shelf. I'm gonna give you prime real estate directly under the grow light. So as we're kind of pulling this shelf together, I'm thinking I wanna go with kind of a fossil theme too. So it's like desert fossil meets tropics. That probably sounds like a weird combination. I don't know what that sounds like, but that's sort of the, the look I envision. So I'm just gonna marry the two together of desert and tropics. I love both equally. I can't pick one. They're both my favorite. So I'm gonna kind of just combine the two. So it's very uh, deserty, tropical, you know, maybe prehistoric ancient kind of feel over there. This monster Deliciosa has been out here 
here in 25% humidity for quite some time. It doesn't grow huge leaves. In fact, actually, I don't even know if this is the kind that grows huge leaves. It might be the uh, Borza, Bor Borza Giana. Yeah. Anyway, the, the one that stays a little bit smaller, smaller leaves, it might be that. I don't know. I got this at Costco for $12 like a couple years ago or something. This poor little baby definitely needs a little help with the humidity, being that our humidity doesn't get above 25% out here. So I am going to move the Lavoie humidifier over in this corner too. I think I'll use one of the crates that Michael made. So let me grab that and I'll be right back. Yeah, I think that'll work fine. We'll just slip it like right in that corner, I think. This can go right on top of there. And then we're gonna tuck this right next to the monster. It's gonna have its own little private humidifier. Mist level one. I just leave it on one. So yeah, it says the humidity level right now is 20%. So that's about average for our living room out here. And I'm just gonna make sure to direct the mist away from the wall so it kind of goes into the plant. I love using a lot of natural textures and one of my favorite things I discovered since moving to the desert is cactus wood. There's all kinds of gorgeous cactus wood. This is a piece of saguaro skeleton and I think I'm gonna put that right on this side. And that is just gonna help tie in our euphorbia even though that is not a cactus and it's from Africa. I just like the overall look of them together. So yeah, we'll, we'll have it somewhere around this area I think. All right, let's grab some fossils. All right, this piece is super heavy. That one I think is gonna be a little off center. Yeah, so I won't have it directly in the middle. And then I have a smaller ammonite fossil. So both of these are ammonite fossils. I've had them for years. I was collecting ammonite fossils for a long time and I absolutely love fossils. Um, one thing that I don't have that I would totally use up here is the, um, like, like the palm leaf fossils, like the fossilized palm leaves. And it almost, it looks like art. It is gorgeous. In fact, um, I'm not going to, I'm not gonna have that for this video because I'm posting this video, but I was just thinking, I'm gonna take you guys out to the gym shows. The gym shows are coming around. They've just got uh, postponed. So normally they go on in January, February. Um, they got postponed to April. The gym shows start in one week and I'm super excited. I can't wait to get out there and film with you guys. I'm like, I feel, you know, like when you have a passion, it is like in you, it is like part of you. Like just thinking of going to the shows gets me so excited, like in my heart. I just feel, <laughs> I just get this burst of energy of excitement and I just love it so much. I love the rocks, the stones, the fossils. It's just amazing to go and see. If you ever get an opportunity to go to the Tucson gym shows, I highly recommend it. Um, some of the shows, uh, like I want to film with you guys every day. I'm going to vlog every day as possible. Um, some of the shows though are a little bit tricky, like the wholesale shows, because you're not allowed to bring cameras in or get footage inside. So I got to be a little, you know, more discreet and more careful about where I'm taking my camera, but I will get as much footage as possible for you guys. So you can see it and at least get to come to the shows, uh, virtually, you know, even if you can't make it, or even if you live on the other side of the world or something, but fossils are like, works of art that cannot be made you know it, they're just like incredible pieces to be able to have that are millions of years old and then this might look like a very unusual rock and it is it is a concretion it's only found in France in one area in these riverbeds the shapes of these are just really unusual very very unique types of pieces here it's it's its own work of art you know all right let's put this right down here I think wait like what side do we like better yeah We'll put it on that side. I love finding really unusual, like natural works of art from the earth. And I just feel like those kind of pieces are just meant for us to find and to enjoy, you know? Like there's a reason that crystals are so beautiful, you know, and so sparkly and are so attractive, right? And it's just really, I don't know, it's, it's an adventure to go out and find those kind of unusual parts of life that not everyone gets to see, you know? Okay, let me show you this floor puff. So here's a floor cushion. It is made in India. It's a natural jute and I love the color variations in the jute. I think when it's woven, it just turns out really cool. And that circular pattern, I love it because it matches our coffee table too. We have that split reed bamboo coffee table and it has a big circular pattern in it too, which reminds me of like, I don't know, like a Zen rock garden or something. And the brilliant thing about floor cushions is they don't have to make sense. You can throw it down on the floor wherever you like. And I'm just gonna throw mine 
yeah, something like that. Just throw it down on the ground. And if there, if there's a good looking piece, it's going to look good no matter where you throw it. So I like the, uh, the casualness that floor cushions create though, you know, okay, I'm just checking the soil and the string of hearts. I think it might have dried out enough for me to be able to repot this now. So actually I'm going to go ahead and do that and get it into this pot. Cause right now it's just still sitting in its nursery pot here. And I think that'll make it look uh, a little nicer, a little more finished. So I'll go do that and I'll be right back. Okay, just finished repotting the string of hearts and holy cow, these leaves, these vines are just gorgeous. Oh my gosh, I love these so much. Just looking at their detail, ah, oh, they are so, so beautiful. Okay, this is one of those plants that just gives me so much joy, just looking at it, just seeing it, you know, elegantly hanging in the corner. I just love these so, so much. And these are one of those plants from Africa. Beautiful, they scramble over rocks and stones on hillsides and uh, stony outcroppings. And of course, these being one of those scrambling, vining kind of plants, there's always a little bit of untangling that needs to happen after you repot one of these. And these Soltec Solution Lights, I know that these are already one of the most popular grow light brands in the plant collector community, so I was really excited to try these out. These look like a regular light, which I love. These are 3000 Kelvin, which is a really gorgeous, you know, warm tone light not too warm, not yellowy, but they're just a beautiful warm daylight, you know, like a sunny glow. And they are perfect for the living room or anywhere where you're going to be having to see them all the time. Look at how they blend in too. They're so minimalistic. Oh, I love it so much. So the pendant size that we have is small and they also make a large one too. And I believe that one is twice as bright as far as the lumens go. And it's the same color though, 3000 Kelvin. I'm also thinking of ordering the large size pendant light and that way I can kind of compare the two and test them out for you guys and let you, let you see them, you know, side by side. Um, so I think I might do that also. And also I have a coupon code if you guys want a discount, if you do want to place an order for any Soltec Solution Lights, I have a discount code, which I will post below in the description box for you. I love the style of pendant lights already, but having a minimalist aesthetic grow light like that, that is just awesome. I love it so much. I love the look of it. And then down here by the window, I added two more of my favorite African plants. On the left, I have a vining plant. That's the Dioscoria elephantipes. It's one of my favorite African plants. They are super cool. They have a really neat codex on them. So they're a codiciform plant and they grow this uh, kind of like a, uh, almost tortoise shell like codex and it grows quite large. Mine's, mine's only a baby still, so it's pretty young, but they're also really vigorous climbers and they will start vining and climbing on anything they can reach around and get a hold of. Uh, so right now mine's just on a little bamboo pole, but eventually once it starts vining more, I will have to switch the, that out and have, let it climb on something a little, little bit larger. They're really fun to grow and they're really cute with these little rounded heart shaped leaves. I noticed they can be a little sensitive to too much highlight, although they do like bright indirect light. They don't want direct sunlight on them, but I think it's going to love it under this grow light. And then next to that, I have an asparagus fern or asparagus cetaceus, also known as asparagus plumosus. These are really cool when they start to grow into their more mature form. Uh, the, the little fronds will kind of kind of uh, splay out more horizontally. Mine are still growing perfectly straight up in the air right now, but eventually as it matures, it will grow horizontally and it looks really, really neat. And my string of hearts are laying on the floor, you might notice here. I don't know exactly where they're going to be going, but it's fun to watch <laughs> where, where they grow. Uh, they are pretty vigorous growers also. And then the Monstera Deliciosa, I don't know if I showed the basket or the stand that I have it on right now, but just to give you a look at it, um, I have it in this basket that I found at Home Goods, and so it's just in a big black nursery pot. Um, I have it in there because it's just lighter weight, so whenever I have to move it around, it's not heavy, uh, you know, compared to if I had it in a big, I don't know, ceramic pot or terracotta pot or something. So I, once the plants get bigger, I try to keep them as lightweight as possible. And then the stand that I have it on, um, that is actually just a rattan ottoman. It came with a chair that we have and I just took the cushion off and use it as a plant stand. And I would replace this crate if I had something, uh, if I had something white, like a little white stand, that would be ideal because then it would blend in more. Um, but I'm just using what I have right now around the house to put this together. And then up here, I did add a couple more small plants. The one I mentioned earlier is the Haworthia. So there it is, I just repotted it and uh, it's gonna need to get watered. I also have to dust the leaves because they're a little bit dusty after repotting. 
And then I had these little pots of lithops. I love this green one. That's the malachite. That is so cute. I think it's a salicola malachite. And malachite is a green stone. I think that's where they got the name from. And then up here, this one, another lithops. But yeah, lithops, another gorgeous African plant from Namibia. And I can always switch items out if I find something else to add in here, like a lithops garden. I do want to pot up a bunch of lithops into one garden. I'm glad you did not walk away from getting that fern or whatever it is, the uh, feather looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were trying to put it down. I'm like, no way. I know. Yeah, Michael talked me into getting this. I, I mean, we both like spotted it, but then I was like, oh man, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to over collect plants, right? I'm trying to be really careful and really pick just choice plants. But that thing, yeah, I'm totally loving that thing. You know what else? Mm -hmm. That pot is made for that plant. <laughs> I know, no I know. Yeah, I mean, that's Fossil. such a perfect match. All right, well, uh, we're coming up on the weekend, and yeah. then the, and do? then the gym shows start on Wednesday. Oh, right. So oh, is it that quick? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Let's so do we'll be looking for fossils. We'll take you guys with us. All right, guys. Love you. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I heard that you guys wanted to see a vlog, so I might have one of those coming up. And we're definitely going to be vlogging the, Vlog gym, the gym shows. Show. Yeah. All right, guys. Love you, and I'll see you soon. Bye.